I'm Larry Chen. I've been shooting car culture all over the world for the past 18 years. From the best builds to the fastest races, I've seen it all. In this series, I'm highlighting the gearheads that inspire me in our generation. I absolutely love going to car shows. Whether it's the local hot rod show down the street from my house, or the more grand concord type shows that feature cars that I cannot even pronounce. They've all had a presence in my life either for work or for leisure. We're now at a point in time where the car community has grown so vast that the more niche shows can thrive. Enter Luftgekult, meaning air-cooled in German. It's a car show that at its core celebrates all things air-cooled Porsches. Yes, that also means me and my totally awesome, optimally water-cooled 996 Turbo isn't allowed. Of course, I can't bring up Luftgekult without also mentioning its founder, Patrick Long. A racing driver by trade, Pat is the lone American in the already elusive and small group of Porsche factory race car drivers. Having spent his entire professional sports car career in a Porsche, Pat has made quite a name for himself. With wins at the grueling 24 hours of Daytona and Le Mans to fill his already long list of achievements, Pat recently took a step back from racing full-time. This has allowed him to focus on his ultimate passion project, Luftgekult. It's hard to describe what the show truly represents, so in this episode, I find myself at Luftgekult 8 in San Pedro, California with Pat to dive more into it. This is so cool. I've never seen this before. I have this set up for you to sleep in tonight. Dialed. Oh, I'm gonna sleep here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That way I can wake up really early and get the load in. Yeah, we, <laughs> we don't want you to have to wait in any lines. No, 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 no. Lines, I'm out. So uh, here we are. Yeah. Luftgekult. Luftgekult, Luft 8. Luft. Luft. That's, that's how you say it. Like Luft balloons. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I remember the first time you came to a lift was Bandito Brothers, right? And you, yeah. wrote, you wrote a piece on Speed Hunters. It was amazing, as well as the photography, of course. Yeah, it's been quite the journey. Um, so I had a chance to shoot Luft two, three, four, five, skipped six, did seven last year at Indy, and now we're here at eight. Yeah, it's good to have you back. I remember six you. You had a little conflict, but you didn't miss much. Universal backlot. I mean, yeah, you, okay. You've, you've taken the tour before. Yeah. The way I explain it, I'm just gonna say it right off the bat. Luft is the greatest car show. <laughs> From you, I'll uh, gladly uh, say thank you, but oh, yeah, that's too big of a title for me to accept. I mean, for me, it, it's obviously um, stacked. You know, the odds are, are that I will appreciate it more because the fact that it's photography and aesthetics and texture and atmosphere, all that first. The cars, yeah, it's important for it to be a very curated, good selection of cars, but it's so much about the placement, the time of day, the light hits a certain part of the car, I, I don't even know where to begin. How did this all begin? 
I think the idea was to tell the story of air-cooled to uh, car enthusiasts, but non-car enthusiasts as well. So the fabric of the event was, how could I get my wife and her friends to be pumped to go to a car show, a static car show? And as you know, that's not always easy. It's great for automotive enthusiasts, but sometimes if you're not super into it, it could get a bit stale. Um, the other part of it is just the, the variety, telling the complete story from the highest level, you know, multi-million dollar cars that are in original uh, as finished in 1968, and then somebody's project that they just rolled out of their garage, and it's their first air-cooled Porsche. They found a 912 on Craigslist, they've modified it, and they want to put it on display, and just putting your arms around the whole community. It's interesting because it's niche, but it's not really. I mean, because obviously there's such a big following and the fact that you've been able to grow this over the past eight years, it, it is kind of insane. It also does help that you rode that wave, like the air-cooled Porsches, you know, they became even more popular. They were already popular, right. uh, especially for enthusiasts, but they gained popularity so quickly. And of course the prices reflected that, right? And then it, it just, like the perfect storm of all things. I guess that that kind of helped Luft grow. For sure, I mean, the, the juxtaposition of social media and especially Instagram, like 2014, I remember driving to the venue on a quiet Sunday morning and thinking, I should throw something up on Instagram, but it really it didn't feel like that was the place to be at that time. And so I think that really was great timing. I think the brand Porsche is a, a wave of itself and we ride inside of that little barrel as a small piece of the puzzle. But I love that Porsche has sort of put our, their arms around us and said, this is what we need to be doing to talk to our future, to engage the future demographic and to convert um, and, and have people come in and think, wow, this is a community I wanna to belong to. It's interesting you say future, but it's like all things from the past. Yes. But a lot of things that are kind of massaged for the future, I guess. Mm -hmm. Air cold, right? I mean, there's, I guess the 959s, they're like, Kind of a little bit of both, right? Right. But um, other than that, most of it, it's all old cars. Yeah, when you have water-cooled heads, but an air-cooled designed engine, it's a little bit of both. 959s, 962s, some of the race cars towards the, the mid-90s, early 90s. I mean, they say what's old is new again, but I think that, at least for my peers and for some of the, the younger kids that I know, maybe it's not about full throttle, big bright watches and brand new cars. The style of a retro vintage 914, it's a little rough around the edges. Um, you know, you gotta get it running and keep it running versus just turning the key to a brand new car that's completely dominated by electronics and modernism. So I think whether it's JDM or old 30s hot rods from Detroit or vintage Porsches, um, there's, there's a, an enthusiasm with the youth and I like that. So in terms of just car shows in general, as you can imagine, I've been shooting cars, car shows all over the world since I picked up a camera. What, what makes Luft different though? There's, there's just something, it's, it's maybe, I don't know what it is. It's the feeling, it's the crowd. It's like so exclusive. People are reselling tickets. So many people wanna be here at this event and so many people have traveled very far to come here. What, what did you guys do? What's that spark that you figured out? I think it's just keeping it fresh, um, making sure that you don't want to miss an event and you don't know what to expect and you know you're going to meet someone new, you're going to see a car you've never seen before. Just continuing to challenge ourselves. I think in, in art, in, in sport, in photography, you try to just push every day the boundaries and not rest on any laurels, not sit back and think, oh, this is plug and play, we got it, let's take the path of least resistance. As soon as you do that, I, I feel like you're, you're sort of on the back side of the performance curve. We've evolved, we try to remain inclusive. Um, we have corporate sponsors that help us get to achieve different things, to welcome more broad audiences and more people, et cetera. And so, you know, it's like a band or an athlete, oh, I knew them when they were 40 cars and 200 people. Sure, there's always gonna be that story, but the bottom line is, is the core of my team and the core of the collectors and the core of the enthusiasts are 
pretty much a small world that continue to just say, hey, I wanna bring this car, it's a new project, or this is a car in my collection that I've never brought out, and I wanna be there, versus us picking up the phone and trying to curate all this. It's really just riding the wave of the brand and trying to keep up with the demand. So I, I touched on the photography thing a little bit, but you have an incredible team working with you. Jeff Swart, he's just such an inspiration to me. I guess the running joke is that we have essentially the same career, but it's like 30 to 35 years apart because he shot all these cars when they were new and I'm reshooting the same cars mm -hmm. as vintage cars. He's actually doing a lot in terms of the aesthetic side of things here. Yeah, he comes at it with so much experience and knowledge of the product, and I think you really have to have both. The amazing thing, as you said, is he was shooting Formula One races before either of you or I were born, um, so he has uh, the understanding of, of the photographer, but he's also a Porsche enthusiast. He's a collector, he's a racing driver, he's somebody that, that bleeds the brand, and I think that a lot of my team, uh, those same things could be said about them, and, and I love that. It, the, the team is made up of people who want to be here. This is not work, this is their passion, this is the event of the year for them to block their calendar off, and to be around legends like Jeff and some of these cars that um, we all have seen in magazines or, or seen a photo, in, a black and white photo of, but we're trying to give everybody the experience, in, including the internal team. In a way, it's almost not even fair to call it a car show. A car show can be just a couple dozen guys meeting in a parking lot and mm. the parking and the actual placement, not curated, just complete disarray, you know, random, uh, just regular pedestrian cars parked in between that. That's kind of what we've, that's what I've grown up on. That's what I understood. Okay, this is a car show. This is an event. It is like a spectacular event and we're talking about a game of inches. Uh, of the way you guys place the cars, it's crazy how much time you spend on something like that. So, so Jeff also, it, it's an unfair advantage for somebody like him because he's placing it almost like for himself, selfishly. Mm -hmm. You know, as soon as he places a car in the perfect position with the perfect color, backdrop, texture, whatever, angle, he likes to take a picture of himself. And then it's like, all right, let the rest of the photographers go at it and see what they can come up with. Yeah, that aspect of creating a photo moment is so inspirational for me, trying to think about that. I'm not a creative, but I love to think creatively and to try to get inside that world. And he's taught me so much, but I think that one of the things he said is, I'm gonna set up a shot and then I'm gonna give every kid with a camera every pro with a camera a chance to take that image in their own direction. So it's kind of like, I'm gonna give you the square box that you have to stay within, and then you have to create that final product. So in a way, there's almost a, a, a photography competition happening, but it's all just organic. There's no prize giveaways, there's no hashtags. It's just shoot what you like and clog the box for a couple of days. I love it. Let's talk a little bit about your racing career because I've had a chance to photograph you while you're racing. Luft 7 is a really good example of you pushing hard to help set it up and you put so much heart and soul and effort and all your time leading up to that point, but you actually had to fly out to go race so you couldn't really see the whole show, right? Exactly. So. Tell me a little bit about that. And I know now you, you're, you've stepped away from racing. Mm -hmm. let's, let's touch on, uh, on that a little bit. Yeah, the aspect of, of Luft was burning inside of me to organize and create 
and try to break into a different sector of all the car shows that I had been to on behalf of Porsche and all the vintage enthusiasm of different spectacles that I had gone to as a kid. I grew up in Southern California. I was going to vintage dirt track races with my uncle. I used to go to Pomona Swap Meet every month when it happened. And so I'm around a lot of that LA car culture since you know early 80s. And then fast forward to owning my own 3-2 um, Carrera this side of me has really been in there, but it was unlocked only kind of once I bought that first car. But I've always been a professional driver as number one. It was tough to balance it at its peak when I was a factory driver, 200 days a year on the road. And then Luft was, is a full-time business. It's year round for me and for my family and for uh, my team. And so, yeah, I was very much wearing two hats, uh, but I think there's a lot of parallels between motorsport and events. Basically, it goes off on a certain day at a certain time, so you gotta work to a timeline. Um, you cannot be scared to dig deep and work outside of your mental and physical um, threshold. Um, and in the end, I think the exposure to team and logistics and deliverables and understanding that as 30, you're gonna achieve 300X versus just one person trying to micromanage the whole thing. So, I mean, when Howie and I started this event, Howie was not really in the Porsche scene. And that was another extension of the non-Porsche, non-traditional car show. So there's just so many ingredients that have helped uh, sort of create the baseline of this brand. And I said from day one, before we did the first car show, I went out and got the trademark because I knew there was something there. And I always said the brand will define itself. And that was my cliche one, one liner that basically gives the power to the demand of the enthusiasts. And we just try to keep up with it. And it still feels like a dream because the demand keeps coming harder and larger uh, every single year. So I feel like the curve is still heading up, which is exciting. So do you think you taking a step back from racing or is there something there in terms of you putting all your effort into Luft? Uh, stepping away from racing had some aspect of Luft connected to it. I think the identification of what I want to do, where I want to be, how I want to be out there, that's a big part of it. But Porsche is still a huge amount of my week. It's a huge amount of my enthusiasm. It's who I am, what I do on the motorsport side, on the product side from a, uh, a brand perspective. I love still being an ambassador. Uh, I love the, the, the side of the technical strategy, racing, uh, young driver development, all that type of stuff on the motorsport side. And then working with companies like Haggerty. I mean, as an ambassador for Haggerty, it's not just about the Porsche world. It's not just about the Luft world. It's talking to people of all generations about the enthusiasm of, of automotive culture. I definitely have to thank you guys for letting me come here to, I guess, exercise my craft. Uh, so my plan of action, as you probably already know, is not actually really focusing on the show. While the show portion of it is cool, my real plan of attack is to get as much stuff of the cars during load-in. It's the only time that a lot of these race cars will move on their own power and also be outside. A lot of times they'll just get stored, put on the wooden blocks, put on wherever, and then that's it. And that's all you get to see. But the fact that I get to see it roll off the trailer or just drive around in the parking lot, or sometimes drive on the street. Like we've seen uh, Bruce Myers drive his 935 from Beverly Hills all the way to the show on the street, which is just insane. It's just so cool to see that aspect and also Come main day, it's so important to me to shoot the people driving in. Mm -hmm. You know, the owner's cars, the people just waiting in line during sunrise, during the good light, um, with Cresties still in their eye, yeah. you know, just trying to get a good spot. And then once the show actually happens, it's like this evolving crowd. It's like this living and breathing thing that shapes the cars mm -hmm. and it's absolutely beautiful. 
on the loading day when everything is coming out of the trucks, like you said, it's, it's in motion. You hear the cars, you see them in different backdrops before they do land for Sunday. And then yeah, Sunday is just a, an evolving um, energy. It just is so many different parts to it. There's dusk and dawn and everything in between. And as you said, different walks of life roll in at different times. And we love all that enthusiasm and we love, it's kind of like the daylight changing. It literally is changing as all the people are changing. And yeah, there's gonna be times where it's just so packed that you can't really get a clean shot. And then there's other times where there's no one around and you have this car by itself and just an amazing still moment, yeah. I remember at Lafa, or I think you slept at the venue mm -hmm. and it was raining all night and you were probably worried that people aren't gonna show up, but it was the complete opposite of that. Like you, you essentially had to turn people away. So many people came, right? Yeah, rain has been part of the storyline. Southern California never rains in Southern California. I think it rained at Luft 2, Luft 3, Luft 4, uh, not 5, but we had a few years in a row where rain was gnarly. I mean, I remember sleeping here in 2017 and the trailer was blowing left and right. The reason I sleep on site is because when these people bring their cars to us, they become my uh, responsibility and part of it is just, I want to know exactly what's going on on the footprint at all times and that's kind of how we run that's how our team runs we're hands-on there are no hours in the day uh, much like your um, mo uh, we just do what it takes and love every second of it and there is that aura there is that energy uh, about uh, being around these cars that that's what i always tell people you have to come and feel it and, and experience it to understand it. And the same goes with the people. There's a whole connectivity of different people from all walks of life that seem to cross pollinate at this show. I mean, at the last show we had 48 of 50 states, 22 countries, people come from all over the world and, and that's a cool part. It's a reunion, it's, a, it's just a, a happening. I also have to thank you for elevating car shows in general because there's just so many people now that are creating these events and shows that want to kind of, I wouldn't say copy, but they get inspired by this event, you know? And then there's a little, you see a little bit here and there, but nothing will ever be like Lufka Gold. Well, thank you. I love inspiring. I love seeing people try to take new ingredients and think about car shows in a different way. And if we have a small part of that, that, that one I'll gladly accept. I think we have uh, turned the corner in, in inspiring new ideas and new ways to experience these cars. I'll never call ourselves the best, but I will take a little piece of that uh, kind of wind shift direction and uh, we're just getting started. Awesome. Thanks, man. Cool. Thank you guys for watching my new Haggerty show. I really wanted to feature automotive trendsetters in our generation. Without Pennzoil, this series wouldn't be possible. They are enthusiasts like us. They believe in car culture and they want to keep it alive. Pennzoil supports a lot of racing, drifting and hill climb and everything in between. They also support a lot of our friends. On top of that, we run Pennzoil in all of our project cars. I hope you like this content because we have a lot coming your way.